Coming up later in the program, we'll get to our debate, Growing a New North. Up first, to tell us about his government's 25-year growth plan for Northern Ontario, here's the Minister of Northern Development, Mines and Forestry, Michael Gravel, also the MPP for Thunder Bay Superior North. And I know you're battling a bit of a cold tonight, so thanks for coming in and being with Great us. Great to be here, Steve. This evening at TVO. I want to start by reading an excerpt from your plan, and then we'll chat a little bit about it. Okay. Vision for Northern Ontario. It is the year 2036, and there's a new Northern Ontario. So says the plan. Northern Ontario has a skilled, educated, and healthy population that is supported by world-class resources, leading-edge technology, and modern infrastructure. Companies scan the world for opportunities to create jobs, attract investment, and serve global markets. Communities are connected to each other and the world, offering dynamic and welcoming environments that are attractive to newcomers. Municipalities, Aboriginal communities, governments, and industry work together to achieve shared economic, environmental, and community goals. That's the, you know, that's the rhetoric, the flowery language that gets us started here. That's also your idea of what a better new Northern Ontario looks like in 25 years, which means that that's not the way it is today. What's the way it is today? Well, there's no question that our government considers uh, Northern Ontario a real priority. We've uh, made extraordinary investments, uh, very big investments uh, in a number of areas, in infrastructure, transportation, health and education, remarkably so. But it's clear to us that indeed we need a vision for the future in terms of a, an economic blueprint. Um, being designated as the second growth plan for the province of Ontario, the first one was done for the Golden Horseshoe, was, uh, was, was pretty special for us. So we recognize this is an opportunity for us to... But if that's the future, work, which looks gold, uh, uh, today we're, we're talking silver, bronze, maybe something less? The fact is we're moving in a very positive direction. There's no doubt about the extraordinary challenges that we're facing right now. That's no secret, uh, whether you talk about forestry or mining, uh, uh, obviously other issues related to transportation and other aspects of that. We're going through some pretty tough times. But there's some really good news. And, and uh, what we need to do is to find a way to coordinate it all, to develop a blueprint or a vision that we think can bring us to take advantage of the opportunities that really are there. We believe the growth plan, which in essence is a document that's been uh, put together by Northerners themselves, will help get us to that place. You've heard the criticism that this is just way too vague. Is that accurate? I don't think so. I, I mean, I, I, I think people should be viewing this as a, as a very positive document. There's about 100 actionable items. There's some very real specifics. What this is also is, is an opportunity for us to, to look at some of these items and say, we want them to be more specific. We want to have some more clear goals in terms of what we want to do in, in terms of making, taking advantage of these economic opportunities. So, um, you know, the fact is that, uh, again, the document itself is a reflection ultimately of what we heard through our two years of consultations, through the public consultation sessions, the technical tables, and various aspects of health, education, Aboriginal economic development. So bringing that together, it's a, it's a, it's a large document in that sense, not too long so much as uh, we wanted to make sure we put together something that we could actually work on, short term, medium, and long term, and that's where we're going. Let me follow up on that, because you, you, you say you want to set goals, but how will you measure whether the goals have been successful. What are the markers you're looking We're at? We're going to have performance measurements. We're, we really are. We're going to... Uh, what are they going to be? Well, certainly the first thing that I want to do is we, we've got consultations going right now. This comes under a piece of legislation called the Places to Grow Act. That's different all by itself. This is not just another document, as people have said. Gee, we've had lots of reports, lots of studies. This is based on a piece of legislation called the Places to Grow Act. Mm -hmm. and, and, and under that act, there's some requirements for how we move forward. Certainly the goal ultimately is to align our sort of uh, uh, capital spending, our, our funding, uh, with the priorities that are set out in the, uh, in the growth plan itself. It's been successfully done in terms of the first growth plan, and we want to be able to move that forward. I'm going to okay, get our Gene North cabinet ministers together. That's a significant uh, uh, a point that needs to be made. There's about 16 cabinet ministers who are supporting this process, and one of our goals is once we're through these consultations that are happening now on the draft plan, get together with the uh, G North Cabinet okay, Committee. But, but what I'm not hearing is this plan will be successful because it will create X number of jobs or start X number of businesses or the population will be this much larger as a result of our plan. 
Do you have benchmarks for any of those three things, for example? We could go through the, through the, the aspects of it one by one. There certainly are aspects related to, to health care, to education, to Aboriginal economic development, uh, infrastructure spending. And we, we know, for example, that indeed uh, over the next three years there'll be over a billion dollars a year spent on infrastructure investment in Northern Ontario. So we are going to have those goals. What's important, though, I think, is to make sure that we take the, 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 the aspects of the plan that are put together and make them work together to help create those jobs. What we do know is that the population in the north is stabilizing. Uh, the, the, the large part of the population is in the five large urban centers, uh, Thunder Bay, Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, Timmins, and North Bay. Uh, we want to be able to work it so that the smaller communities as well can be brought into the, uh, uh, the economic opportunities as well. So that's why, for example, we've got regional economic zones that we're recommending be brought forward. Okay, but in, I mean, sh should you not have a number in mind at the end of the day which says, if this plan works, we will have created X number of new jobs by the time it's all said and done. Well, I mean, certainly that's, that's something that I guess we could do. What we wanted to do indeed was, was take an a, a opportunity to basically work with Northerners to develop a plan based on what are our assets and opportunities. And we do have some real assets. Take a situation that we're at right now in terms of the forestry industry. How do we help transform that? And indeed, it will create jobs. Uh, the same with the mining sector. So uh, the, the decision was made that we're not going to put target figures in terms of jobs, other than the fact that the, the, the goal is to create jobs. The goal is to increase our population. The goal is to put the, the plan together put the short-term, medium-term, long-term initiatives in place, and with that will come uh, new opportunities and new jobs. Are there any we want to be fair and honest and realistic. Are there any benchmarks in place in terms of trying to recapture the tens of thousands of jobs that have, for example, already been lost in paper mills and forestry? etc. Well, certainly as I say, we, we know that there's a transformation of the forestry sector. Uh, we think there are some real opportunities to, uh, to, to, to develop uh, new value-added uh, businesses. I know that one of our panelists tonight will be probably talking about that as well. The fact is that we think we can bring jobs back. It's generally conceded that in terms of the primary forestry sector that it's going to be difficult to have the same number of jobs as we had before in terms of those uh, large companies. But we think there are real job opportunities in the value-added uh, forestry sector. But not more jobs probably, right? Yeah, listen, I think be I, smaller. No, the opportunities are there. We're looking at, you know, research and development becoming a real core. We're looking at where we're seeing more jobs in northern Ontario in a very significant way, certainly is, is in the in the healthcare field and in the education field. That's that's happening. You, when you look at the breakdown of where jobs are coming, they're coming in that, that, that area, those areas. But we recognize that we have an opportunity to also create jobs in forestry, in mining, in transportation, in tourism, in culture and we're building towards making that happen by developing this plan that I think is ultimately going to be embraced by Northerners and will help us move towards making that happen. Do you really have a good sense about how the forestry industry is going to transform itself over the next 25 years and therefore you know that so we can be a player in that? Well, one of the key aspects of the, of the recommendations related to forestry is the uh, uh, forest tenure and pricing reform that we're, we're undergoing. We recognize that we need Better to find explain a way... what that is. Well, the fact is right now we've got uh, the forestry sector essentially, all the crown land resources that are there are pretty much uh, uh, taken up by the those that, that own the, the sustainable forest licenses and they've got the, uh, uh, the ability to basically uh, control the resource uh, over a period of time. We recognize that there's a need to, uh, to let some of the new entrants who've got value added things uh, get into the system. Where the system is now is that it's difficult for, for, for new entrants to be able to get access to the fiber. We, we recognize we need to change that. How do we continue to support the primary forest sector while we open it up to the new entrants, of which there are many out there, and I could give you many examples. So we're, we're going, that's one of the recommendations that's in the report. We're working on it actively as we speak. And quite frankly, our ministry, we, we want to be able to put the wood that is basically uh, uh, there in the province to work, to create jobs. And again, ultimately, this is a document that's about job creation. That's forestry. Let's talk mining. In fact, sure. the last time you were here, six yeah. months ago or so, right. we talked about the new mining act that exactly. you guys are bringing in. And again, looking forward 25 years, how different is the mining sector, do you anticipate, going to look from the way it is today? Well, there's no question that there's the, 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 this is where technology, I think, comes into play, too. There's obviously new opportunities in the mining sector. We know that uh, there's been uh, you know, a downturn essentially related to the global financial crisis and, the, uh, and therefore the, the subsequent downturn in commodity prices. They're coming back. Uh, well, gold has remained high, as I think most people who know the industry know well. That's been tremendous. This is a huge industry for Northern Ontario. 
$10 billion in mineral production, over $600 million in exploration about a year and a half ago was what was happening. We think that by building in, uh, uh, working with our mineral industry cluster, which is getting all aspects of the mining sequence in place, we can build in more opportunities, again, with research and development and, and bringing things up to speed to the reality of the 21st century. There are going to be more opportunities there. There's a huge mining supply and services sector particularly in northeastern Ontario. Can we expand that to northwestern Ontario as well? I think we can. So there are these great opportunities, I think, in the mining sector. There's no doubt uh, we, we feel confident that um, uh, the mining industry will be coming back, and there's lots of jobs. And in fact, one of the issues that we really got is the lack of skilled workers for the mining sector and for many others. That's one of the issues that we deal with in the, uh, in the grow plan as well, the need to bring up the skills, which uh, certainly brings us to the opportunities that are for many of the Aboriginal uh, people in our province. Uh, within a generation, 25% of the workforce in Northern Ontario was going to be Aboriginal. We need to partner with them in terms of those economic development opportunities. We're doing it now. We need to do a better job. We're going to talk about that in our discussion we afterwards will. as well. well. I didn't check the price of gold today. It's over a thousand bucks an ounce though now, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Should, should you not be charging mining companies more uh, to mine the gold in our province given the enormous windfall the price of gold's at these days? Well, uh, that's a sector where the, the prices do fluctuate. Uh, you know, we have pretty uh, high right now. Uh, well, they are high right now, and uh, you know, the industry will tell you. And you can talk about other uh, metals as well. I mean, for example, uh, palladium's gone up again. But you know, the Lactazil mine in uh, near my community of Thunder Bay, where I where I live, I mean, is not yet open. They had to close it down. Uh, they want to see some sustainability. Uh, certainly, it's important for us to work closely with the mining sector. With the Mining Act, uh, our goal was to find a balance. So we wanted to make sure that we maintained uh, the, the, the province as a very attractive investment uh, 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 jurisdiction for mining at the same time while we brought the Mining Act up to 21st century uh, values. And I think we managed to do that, but that's a challenge. But it's important to maintain our very close relationship with the mining sector, and we want to uh, continue to attract investment in large numbers to the province. Mm -hmm. And I think that is going to continue to happen. How about broadband? How important <clears throat> is improving broadband to bring in the North End? Well, it's huge. And, and already the provincial government, as well as the federal government, has invested uh, uh, in multi-million dollars in terms of upgrading broadband, but there are still a number of communities, particularly in the far north, that are that are not that don't have access to high-speed internet. That's a game where I think the growth plan is a, 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 is a coordinated effort. If we can get broadband up uh, up to our all of our communities in the north, we can do anything in northern Ontario. We can bring in whatever business is into the community, and that no matter how small the community is or how large it is, we can actually work together. That's also perhaps how we can bring our regional economic zones to work together. So that's a huge priority for the, uh, uh, the growth plan. And again, in terms of aligning our spending and our dollars that we want to be able to uh, fit into the growth plan priorities, uh, the, the uh, broadband uh, commitment is a, is a very important one. Okay, a couple minutes left, and I want to tackle two more things. Uh, you know, unfortunately, when you think of Northern Ontario, a lot of the time you're thinking, boom, bust, boom, <coughs> bust, boom, bust. Do you imagine a time when the North will ever be not that way? Well, I'm uh, of a certain age. I, I grew up, uh, I've lived my whole entire life in, uh, in uh, northern Ontario, almost the whole time in Thunder Bay, and uh, I've seen the, the booms and the busts. What seems to be different about the, uh, uh, the uh, downturn in the forestry sector is it hasn't got the same boom-bust quality. There's a change. There's a transformation going on. Certainly, I think that's the goal, again, of the growth plan. That's why we're so excited about it, actually, because we believe that this is giving us the opportunity to really plan and coordinate, taking all aspects of the economy so that we can have a sustainable growth in our economy. The truth is uh, the growth plan for Southern Ontario was about containing growth. Mm -hmm. Our growth plan for Northern Ontario is about taking advantage of the opportunities are to, to build that economy, and I believe we can do that. So I think that's what this growth plan is about, perhaps building that sustainable long-term economy over the next 25 years years with short-term goals that will help us get to the mid-term ones and then the long-term ones. And when will the final plan with implementation outlines, dollar figures, all of that, when's that going to be released? We uh, have consultations going on as we speak. Uh, there's a few more communities we're going to. I want to get together with the, uh, the G North cabinet ministers. We, we are looking forward to having a final growth plan uh, in, uh, in 2010 as early as we can and uh, then we'll move towards implementation at that stage. Michael Gravel. Minister of Northern Development, Mines and Forestry. That's a big portfolio. Why don't you join me on the other side of the studio and we'll continue our discussion with the other guests. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks so much.